day four of the WISIS 2015 conference and delegates are out of the big auditoriums and down to business at workshops throughout the day. Workshops have been divided into three streams. Interactive, country workshops and thematic. One of the first items on the agenda was just such a thematic session. The high-level dialogue on empowering women to innovate through technology. Presenting at the workshop was Helen Schöpmann of the European Commission. We were talking about different uh, gaps for women to access uh, technology, uh, careers and skills in different ways. Also presenting at the event was Roxana Rugina, representing the Romanian arm of Simplon.co. This is a group that aims to train underprivileged women and others computer coding. Uh, Simplon is actually a concept of learning. Uh, we try to teach uh, non-technical people, especially coming from disadvantaged areas, and groups like women, um, but also kids and unemployed people. We teach them how to code. We teach them how to code to make apps, to find a job or make a business. If there has been a recurrent theme at the WISIS 2015 Forum, it's how to build trust. Trust issues are not necessarily just between end users, email users, social network users and their providers. It can be a question too for sovereign states. Um, we have five work streams. In this new world order we mustn't forget the sovereign state. Uh, whatever we think of them, whether some of them we like them or not, we've got to remember that in what's known now, known now as the, the multi-stakeholder approach, that the state, governments of states, are vitally important in building global trust in cyberspace. Of course, the WISIS Forum is about more than just the sessions. Informal conversations and heads-to-heads -heads are taking place all over the ITU. People sharing their ideas and their initiatives. You'd be surprised who you might see passing through. Father Paul Tai is the envoy of the Holy See. The Holy See wanted to highlight the fact that the new technologies are an extraordinary blessing for humanity. They have the potential to enable us as a human race to work together, to express our solidarity and concern for one another, and as such we rightly believe they should be celebrated. At the same time, I think we just wanted to say one thing, is that we need to realise that the technologies themselves are not going to solve all the problems of the world, that there's a need for real human commitment for individuals and institutions to take responsibility to ensure that we realise this potential. And that means that we try and make sure that all our discussions and all our conversations are truly inclusive. Also, just on his way out of a workshop on e-business, was startup entrepreneur Alexandre Berthaud. So we're, we're a Swiss-based startup, um, and what we do is we realize that there's a big issue. If you want to bank those, there are two billion people which are unbanked in the world, and most of them are in the developing world. And we've realized that uh, so far we've tried to push, and when we say we as the development world and the financial sector, we've tried to push individual-based um, financial services, be it loans or accounts. And this is the way it works in, in Europe. But in Africa, in Asia, in Latin America, it's actually a collective way of uh, savings. People save in group and people lend to each other in groups. So we want to actually revolutionize finance by making it collective. It's a complicated puzzle of ideas being presented here at the WISIS 2015 Forum. Now the question is how to take those pieces, put them together to make the puzzle. Join us tomorrow for the fifth and final day of the forum where delegates aim to do just that, pull the ideas and action lines together to build a vision for the future.